Hello friends and welcome back. After we done configuring our migration and create a new configured migration, it's now time to add our seed data into our database so as to be able to have the starting data on what we can go around and play with. I'm going to go into my data folder and I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call as a seed data like this one and inside this folder i'm going to add the json that i'm going to be providing and this json contains all the data about the the product plans the product types and the product that we are going to be seeding to our database was to be able to have the starting uh, point or the starting data so i'm going to go ahead and open this into explorer i'm going to review into explorer and i'm having this data here as in the student data let me check where it is here i'm having all these three json i'm going to copy this i'm going to provide these uh, kind of files into the description and make sure to check the link there and i'm going to go inside this data and i'm going to paste it in here and after pasting that when you come when you come back into the C data, you can see that I'm having these brands. You can see that I'm having this as JSON. I have like six brands. I have the products and I have up to 20 products in here that we can uh, test on. And also I'm having these types as smartphone, clothing, electronics and automobiles. I'm going to go ahead and clear my terminal and close it for now because we don't need to write this way. And I'm going to minimize this one so as to be able to have a clean workspace and close all of this as well. And the thing that we're going to do is to add you now the class that will help us to perform all this seeding stuff. And that one will be also living to where our application DB context live and to be into um, this infrastructure and into the data. So I'm going to create a new C -sharp class and I'm going to call this application db context seed this is now the name that we're going to be giving our class and in this class i'm going to add a static method that will help us with seeding and i'm going to say public and i'm going to say static async and task and i'm going to call this seed async and of course as we're going to be interacting with the database we need to bring our database context in here i'm going to say application db context and i'm going to call this as context and inside this method this is where we're going to start to implement all the logic that we need to seed our database and before we seed any data into the database we need to check if we don't have the existing data into that table that we're going to initialize for example let me say that i'm going to start with the product blend i'm going to say that if and i'm going to say not context dot product blends and i'm going to say that any like this one if we don't have any this is what it means if we don't have any any data into the product blends this is when we are going to start seeding the data into the table so i'm going to read from the json and after reading from the json you need to deserialize what we read and after that we are going to start adding those into our tables and the way we do that i'm going to say var and i'm going to call this as brands data and i'm going to start to read from the json and i'm going to say file dot read all um read all text i'm going to use this one and i'm going to say that i'm going to be um into i'm going to go up one level i'm going to say that i'm going to be into the infrastructure and i'm going to go into data and see data this is the location on where your json live and after going make sure you don't write any typo and you're going to add the brands dot json all right and double check to see if you didn't make any typo or any error because it can bring you into trouble whenever you're going to read from json and after reading from the json we need to deserialize and i'm going to create another variable and call this as brands and i'm going to say that these brands will be equal to json this json serializer this one will, that, that will be coming from system.text.json and I'm going to deserialize this into a list of the type that we're going to see and this is now the product brand. Make sure you get this right too, product brand. 
and after this i'm going to pass in the um this brand brands data in here okay after doing this we are going to say that we're going now to start to add this into our table i'm going to say context product brand dot add range and i'm going to say that i'm going to add the brands and when you reach here you can see that again the brand is complaining whenever we hover on here it is saying that possible null reference argument for parameter entities and i'm going to go again into my uh, um, infrastructure project and check for the narrow frag and i'm going to disable okay and go back here and you can see that the, the warning will go away and once we ensure that our code are uh, properly structured we can go ahead and use them and pay attention whenever you copy paste because there are some points when you copy paste you forgot to change some of the parameters and it it goes down so i'm going to copy these and paste it one more time second time and this is where i'm going to deal with the product types uh product types like this one and i'm going to change this as uh types data okay and i'm going to change this as types again i'm going to say this uh will be types and in here there will be types data again and the product product types okay and here it will be types okay types and here we have to change this as product type okay and we're going to do the same to the product itself products and i'm going to say products data products data and i'm going to say products and in here i'm going to deserialize the product and uh, here it will be for the uh, product data and in here i'm going to say this as products and products again here list of product products data and here i'm going to say products and again i'm going to add the product all right and once we are we and once we ensure that we are getting this right and we didn't make any typos and we remembered to change the types as well we are going to use now the change tracker to see if we have any change and if we do have one we're going to apply them into our database so i'm going to say that if context dot change tracker dot has changed if we get this as a true i'm going to await and i'm going to say context dot save change async like this one and we are done all right this is now the class that will help us to see the data into our database and again you have to double check to ensure that you don't have any error for me it looks nice I'm going to close this and I'm going to configure the migrations and and I'm going to go into the program.cs and before this app.lan we need to add the configuration as we are going to be running this it is going to check if there is no pending migration apply them to the database and if also we have the seed crust is going to seed the data into the database and the way we do that first of all we need to bring the scope and I'm going to say using var scope and i'm going to say that this will be equal to app dot services dot create scope after creating the scope here i'm going to also make another variable for the services and this will be equal to scope dot service provider like this one and after getting all these services also we need to get the context and var context this will be coming from services and i'm going to get the required service get required service and the required service that we're going to get will be the application db context and after getting this db context i'm going to close like this one 
after getting this context again you are going to bring the logger because when we are going to perform this kind of stuff we need to log the errors whenever we get one so i'm going to say services dot uh i logger get required service and the required service that that we're going to get is the i logger and after getting this i logger it will be used to log all from the program go ahead and write program and here we go all right after we are done with this i'm going to uh, i'm going to use the try and the catch block so as to be able to perform all of these operations and it doesn't have to break our application whenever something goes wrong that's why we're going to use the try and catch i'm going to say try and i'm going to use the snippet for try and catch try and i'm going to use this snippet for try and catch and inside the try this is where we are going to say that await and i'm going to say context dot database dot migrate async and this is the one that is going to be used for migration and whenever the application is going to start to really check if they are an opening migration and apply them to the database and again after after creating the migration we need also to seed the database and i'm going to say await application db context seed this one and i'm going to call the method that we have there that is called seed async and we need also to pass in the context as we're going to be dealing with the database and again you have to close with the semicolon and in here this is where we're going to get our exception and i'm going to say that exception I'm going to remove this system and i'm going to call this as ex and after getting this exception you're going to use the logger to log it to our uh, terminal i'm going to say log logger dot log error whenever we get one and I'm going to log this exception itself and add an additional message like an error occurred during migration or seed. Okay. And after doing all of this, make sure you uh, you save everything. And after saving everything, we are ready now to start our application and see if it is going to work on the way that we expect i'm going to go into the terminal and i'm going to go back one one uh, level and go to the api and i'm going to say dot net watch learn and if there is no errors it is going to start our application and it is going to try to to apply the pending migration and the seed data into the database whenever we get one so i'm going to go ahead and click and press enter all right and once this is now successfully started we can go back to the history and you can see that there are no errors but we are getting all the information about all the action that have been done and you can see that we are not getting errors but we are getting some warnings like for uh, this null variable uh, like this null possible null reference that's the that is because we didn't uh, disable the this frag so i'm going to go back here and i'm going to see where there is this um, narrowable frag and i'm going to disable and this will remove this warning into our program.cs file and let's wait until it is removed and when we go back to the logger here you can see that now it is removed and we can see that we tried to we successfully seed our data into the database but we can't take a word for it until we taste so whenever you click on the extension for this postgres and you go ahead and refresh this db shop it and you go into the public you can see that it was successfully created all of this table and whenever i i, I right click there and select the top a thousand lows we are going to see that we are having this as expected all these blends and let's try to do this for the types too you can see that i'm getting all the types as intended and also for the product and you can see that i am also able to get this right all right this was like a lot of job to do if you let there congratulations and if you met with any problem always make sure to write that in the comments so that i can come and see where you are getting stuck and we are going to stop the video for here but i'm going to i will install the git but we didn't use it i'm going to start using it and to start by using this one i'm going to go up one level here 
and I'm going to say git add. I, I will start by git init to initialize this as a git repository, and I'm going to say git add, and it is going to add all the files into the staging, and I'm going to um, say git commit, and I'm going to add the message that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to say uh, end of uh, ef section, like this one. As I'm using this as a fresh machine, it is going to ask me to, to configure this and I'm going to add my email here as info at hanomedia.com and also for the username, I'm going to copy this and paste it here and I'm going to add, for example, a Chris and I'm going to commit again so as to be able to do this and voila all right this is now the end of this video i hope you guys find this interesting let me know if you met with any problem as i was saying and i'm going to show you how to add the controller in the next video and we'll be saying on how to get the data from the database by using the various methods that i'm going to be showing you in the next video so from now on till next time see you guys in the next one Peace.